So we've been talking in these videos about frameworks for understanding AI and personalization. And I'd like to drill down on a particular area that comes up all the time with clients, which is data. As I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, AI lives for data. You constantly have to feed it data so that it can learn, so it can make better judgments, so it can generate sharper, more relevant content. All of that depends on the care and feeding of data. From a manager's perspective, if you are a leader over a company that is thinking about doing much more with AI, you've got to think through your data being one of your most fundamental assets. And let's take that one step further because similar to the way we talk about asset turns in many aspects of financial management that you've got fixed costs that are in an asset and the more you can turn that, the more value you can generate. Well, if your data is an asset, we should be thinking about asset turns for data how much you're actually using and activating the data you have. The difference though being, when we think about data and asset turns, we're trying to grow the denominator, which is the amount of assets, data assets, which means at the top, we want to move even more the number of ways we are using data. And so thinking about data as an asset and turns as a concept starts leading to a number of different implications that I'd like to dive into. So the first is in terms of building the assets themselves. And most companies have not really thought through the end to end data management that goes on in their company as even an explicit thing to be managed. They're not always thinking about the way data is collected. Is it collected consistently? Is it in the same format? Is it always there? Is it timely? Are there things about the way that data is collected, such as let's say something like addresses that could have many different variations? And there are tools to help you clean up and normalize data but you have to be conscious of that end-to-end -end data flow. So if your salespeople are bringing in data in a B2B environment about their clients, what is the quality of that data? Now, Gen AI can make that dramatically easier. You can just talk into your phone and it can turn that speech into the data that would populate a database about an account. But you've got to think about that explicitly. And then you've got to realize once you have that data, data from all different parts of the company needs to start coming together to deliver personalization. And one of the things that I've realized as I've been working with clients is that data is mostly parallel to their organization structure. So they have a branch and tree organization structure where you've got separate data for finance, for product, for customer service, for marketing, for billing, all of that coming from separate systems, all of that managed separately, many quality issues within each area, and then it hasn't really come together. The difference is that now you have to think about all of that data as being part of a network where the data enhances each other and it comes together to give a much more complete and timely profile of what's going on in the business and especially what's going on with an individual customer. And so instead of thinking about an org chart as branch and tree, maybe we should be thinking about org charts as networks and the data being interconnected. Thinking through where to put that data then becomes the next challenge. 
But there are tools for that now. There are data lake tools, data warehouse tools, customer data platforms. There's many different ways of storing data. And now with AI capabilities, as I had discussed actually an example in an earlier video when I talked about narrative that uses AI to understand one database, look at another database, normalize that data and bring it together. AI tools are making it easier to bring all of that data into one repository. But that has to be carefully and deliberately thought through and part of the overall data management strategy. So let me ask you, who is in charge of the data management end to end in your company? Let's take it one more step. All of that data is now being put into a central repository. Likely, you're going to have some analytic tools, many of them likely driven by AI, to do things like flag customers who are having a problem that merits follow-up, who flag customers who might be really good candidates for a particular kind of cross-sell. And so based on that, you need to use that data to flag that customer, use that to inform a targeting contact to an individual customer, see what happens, and gather the data back. That's a very superficial view of what's happening, but nonetheless, at a minimum, at a minimum, that cycle has to come back, and that data from that interaction needs to then come back and into the system to further inform what has happened with you and keep your file updated. But we know that doing that kind of targeting is much more complex than that. You need an engine that has learned about what are the actions that merit rapid follow-up. For those kinds of actions, for people with certain kind of profiles, how do I get the right message to them? What is the right content? What is the right channel? What is the right timing? And all of that needs to be informed by some type of intelligent orchestration engine. And there are many of those tools as well out there. But the challenge is constantly generating the data to feed that orchestration engine to help it understand what works for whom when. And that requires testing, constant, relentless testing. Testing who are the right priority people to send something to. What are the different forms of content? And you can use generative AI to come up with endless numbers of content permutations to test. What's the right channel? Is it email? Is it text? Is it on site? Is it through paid media? What is the timing? Do I send it once? Do I send it twice? The system, the AI doesn't know that. You can't just buy a tool to tell you that. You have to generate the data to help the AI understand what's working for whom under which conditions. You have to constantly, constantly feed the AI through testing. And so that whole process of nonstop, relentless testing is part of the end-to-end -end management of data because it's how you create more data. And coming back to the initial concept of asset turns, how you actually increase your denominator of data assets because you're driving more interactions with more variation that can feed more intelligence into your engine that you can use for activation. And then the more granular you can describe each of those interactions. So not just what content did you use, but have an endless number of content variations with different colors, with different background images, with different text, and all of those variables being tagged and tested. Again, that's creating more data that's coming in for the AI to learn what is the precise combination that's going to drive 
the most likely action under certain circumstances for an individual. But you need to step back and understand that end-to-end -end cycle of data. So how are you collecting it? How are you integrating it? And how are you constantly creating more of it? And then I'll add one more, which is what data do you have permission to use for what purposes? Because that's a parallel part of the data. So it's essentially metadata, data about your data, that informs you whether or not you've got the permission from a customer to use their data for marketing purposes. And depending on where you are geographically, there are different levels of permission and precision of permission that you need. And you may also have to allow somebody to remove their data from their data set, like the California rules require. But thinking about permissions as data as well, and how do you go maximize those permissions by asking people for it, by explaining how your data, their data is going to be used, by showing them how their data creates value for them. That's another piece of the puzzle. So let's step back and think about, in our organizations, how is the blood flow of data cycling through the body of your enterprise? Who is in charge of that? How are the different functions all working together to create an integrated network that captures, integrates, and uses data to constantly add value to the customer, but to also constantly feed your AI so that it can make smarter and more granular decisions. So I'd like you to think through that with your, within your companies and then work through what are the blockers? Is it about nobody having responsibility across the board? Is it that data itself hasn't been prioritized? Is it that we really haven't thought about data as an asset to build and the concept of data turns as being something we should focus on? All of which I think should be worthy of some more conversation in your next leadership team meeting. And the next one, I'm going to talk about organization issues that you've got to consider as you start managing data using AI and driving towards more personalization.